It's nice to hear the birds singing in the morning. Well, even with daylight savings time now, I'm leaving for work and the sky is bright. It's cloudy this morning, so I'm not sure if the sun is above the horizon yet for us here, but it's a change, that's for sure. I keep thinking I'm late. Looking around, I woke up, I looked outside, I'm like, oh, the sun's coming up, I'm late. Looked at the time, oh. No, we're just getting, uh, getting longer daylight hours now.
right, empty as it should be. This trailer we're dragging up to Toulon and Arburg. Toulon is about an hour northwest of here. And Arburg is our usual, about two hours north, about another hour from Toulon. Toulon's about halfway there. I'm gonna load this trailer right up, put it back up and get it ready for our highway driver that's gonna take it wherever it's going. These loads that I've been picking up in these lately have been going to the southern US, anywhere from uh, Florida to Texas to California, all over the place, so. I'd love to take it down there myself, but I got things to do around here. Watch your head on this. Bonked it more than once. <laughs> well, we've got a little bit of a problem now. Um, It finally happened. I don't know what happened, but she's not starting. So uh, I guess I'm gonna have to go let the shop know. Maybe we can, uh, I still got air in the system. I could probably pull it out from underneath this trailer and go grab uh, the other trailer. I don't know if this truck has finally died or if they can do a quick fix on it. <laughs> I just told my dispatcher that the truck won't start. <laughs> he responded, just kick it. Okay. Well, maybe if I just kick the tire. <clears throat> Mike told me to give you a good kick. Maybe that'll work. You cycle through one more time. If it doesn't work this time, I'm gonna go talk to the shop. I gave her a good kick, man. Just like you told me to. here for our first stop it's just a couple of pieces we're going to quickly throw them onto the front of the trailer here so i'm just going to slide this back so that we can get them in so when we open that lever that shrangle these hooks release you see those are still on there I'm just going to leave you right here and uh you'll be able to see if i can uh Snap this properly here. You just slide it open. My friend's gonna throw that onto the front of the trailer for us. And then we head up to Arburg and we'll uh, load the rest up on the, uh, on the back of the trailer there. That's just one piece. He's got one more piece to throw on yet. This here is going to Burlington, Vermont. We're taking it all the way there. Well, not me, but another driver with us. <laughs> Easy as that. All loaded up, tied down. Let's roll it up and go. Watch that hook there. I've got to hook it in. I've got to do it from the outside though. And there you go. Top and bottom. The other side as well. You want to make sure that these are locked in properly before you go. Now I just got to go tighten up the tension at the back. Lock up that curtain. And we'll be out of here. Just gotta tighten this. This pin is gonna 
push, sort of look like it's pushing that forward, but it's actually pulling the curtain back. that roller hits that pin there and you know it's all the way back just gotta do the other side and that roller all the way to the back as well as we tighten up the whole side here there we go this work long and tight buttoned up straps are tight we're ready to rock and roll got another uh, hour drive north for the rest of it so the reason they sent me up here to pick pick up these loads is so that our highway drivers don't have to I always really appreciated this when I was on the highway otherwise they got to spend half a day if not a full day just getting their freight together before they can get on the road. This way, I go get it for them, and today, instead of them out here picking this load up themselves, they're at home with their family. And then tonight or tomorrow, they'll come and hook up to this load and just take off. They don't gotta waste a day at home doing this, I'll do it. And then I go home to my family at the end of today as well. So it's a win-win gives me something to do and gives our highway guys more time at home. So we're down the road at our second pickup for today. I don't know if this is going to the same place or not. I can't see anybody around here yet, but I'm gonna go get ready to be loaded. So we're gonna do the opposite of before. Last time we just opened the front and rolled it back. Now, since we're already loaded in the front, I'm just gonna open the back and roll it to the front. Then they can have at it, load me however they want. When they're done, I'll tie it down, do the best tarp job I can, and head back home. What's the time now? Quarter after one, by the time I get out of here, it'll probably be like 2.30, maybe three, two hours back, four or five. That'll be the end of the day. And there's the rest of it. There's two pieces out there. Those are going to Owatonna, Minnesota. We spent a lot of time there. You guys remember that? Have you been watching that long? That's where we picked up those loads of glass and I'd have to tarp them. And I'd usually take them out to British Columbia. They're doing very well. They're very busy, which means that we're very busy because we haul their stuff. So thankful for stuff to do you know oh walking into things here watch out
buddy. You got a car coming. He's slowly creeping past me here. Yeah, there you go. Now you see it. There you go. <laughs> you forget it was a two lane? You never know. People are crazy. So, what is today? Wednesday? It is the Queen's birthday today. Happy birthday to Her Majesty. 95 years old. Wow. From the south perimeter, headed westbound around Winnipeg, turning southbound onto Highway 59 from the perimeter is always a little interesting. We exited onto here and now we gotta turn that way. So we gotta go across this lane of traffic and enter that lane of traffic. But you can't see who's coming over there. You don't know if they're coming this way or if they're going down the other exit lane down to the perimeter that way. And you also can't see who's coming over there because there's a hill. See, there's a car coming now. You can just see them right as they pop over. And if you can see them, it's already too late. With a big truck to cross anyway. And you can't just cross over one set of lanes and wait for that lane to be clear because then your trailer's blocking this highway here, which is 90 kilometers an hour, 55 mile an hour. And then you could be causing an accident because people coming over the hill there don't see you until the last minute. This is the most ridiculous interchange in Winnipeg on the perimeter. I don't know why they built it this way. Okay, now we got a free clearing here. Nope, there's people coming. So that's the perimeter that they're coming over there going that way. That's the, the southbound perimeter. We're facing west over there. So we exit off to the right and we got to turn left and go back over the perimeter this way. Does that make sense? I'll have to show you on the map what I mean. It's a ridiculous, ridiculous way of doing things. And I don't know who thought of this. I don't know who signed off on this and said, yep, that's going to be a good idea. That'll fit in with Winnipeg streets perfectly. I mean, they have a point, but. And over that way, I don't know if they're on the 59 highway or if they're on the exit over there going to the perimeter, like I said. So sometimes you just gotta be a little aggressive and just give her and hope for the best. See here we have a little gap in traffic coming. We can come. We just gotta hope for the best. No, now we got a truck coming from that side. I can't cut him off. That white truck right there, he's on this line. And now we got more people coming from this way. So yeah, we're just gonna sit here and you'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you. Maybe this will end up in the right hands. Maybe this footage will go somewhere to our legislature where they can actually uh, make changes to this interchange. Because this is dangerous. Most people go way around just to avoid this intersection. I wanted to show it to you today. More people coming. Okay, here comes another gap. Nope, nope, never mind. This car's coming. There's cars coming. Okay, we got that Corolla. Oh, no, more, more cars. Oh, that guy's turning. That guy's turning. Nope, more cars. Sometimes you gotta sit here forever waiting. Uh, and remember, both directions have to be clear for you to cross in a truck. Otherwise, you're blocking this direction. See, now there's a big gap coming here again. And that direction's not clear. Not at all. Lots of traffic coming. So I'm not going to make any cuts here or anything. I'm just going to show you. I should have gone around, but you know, I figured, you know, I'm going to show them this intersection today. Today's the day, you know. Another big gap after this car. Is there a gap on that side? Yes, there is. A small gap, but we're gonna go for it. Oh boy.
probably could have waited for the next available spot, but who knows? I could have been waiting there for like another hour. Eventually, you just got to get aggressive and go for it at your best opportunity. I'm hoping that one day that gets changed. But now, other than that, it's been a great day. Just down the street, uh, over the floodway here and around the corner. That's where work is, the yard. And uh, we're gonna drop this trailer in the yard there and jump in the pickup and head home. The time is now 4.30. So I should be on the way home around five or so. Five thirty is when we're rolling out of here. Someone's got a beautiful Challenger here. They don't drive it to work every day, but three ninety two Hemi. I like that car. <laughs> 